What about Europe? And how Europe uses this concept? There are some initiatives that use the concept of heritage. One of, one of the most important and the most intriguing concept in this perspective is the European Heritage Label, an initiative that started in 2007 with a few premises 2005. And as an intergovernmental concept, it was taken by the European Parliament in 2011 and now is an EU initiative. So in Europe, the idea to find this commonality is very strong. To find a concept that will give a form to a common image of the past, that will go much beyond the limits of European nations, European national understandings of the past. And this is why the concept of heritage is that important. No, not history, not memory, not tradition. They are very particular. They always, they must be conflictual. But heritage gives a new perspective. What places can be and could be considered as European places of heritage? We've got places that are important for nation, for member states of the EU. This is first. Second question concerns uh, the, the second requirement is that these places must be important not only for nations and member states, but they must be important for Europe, for its art and science. Then we might consider in constructing, in constructing of this list places, landscapes, and even archaeological locations. And then we're going to something quite intriguing, important in the Polish case as well, this is the question of non-material, Im immaterial, intangible heritage. Alors, so, question of symbols, values, and artistic trends. This is a perspective that was given by the Commission working on the requirements concerning the possible list of objects that will be shortlisted and put on the list, and national ministries, ministries of member states, decided what will be put on this list. Between 2007 and 2011, 68 objects were put on this list. The question is what we pose, what did we put on this list? We put in Krakow the cathedral, then we put the old town of Lublin, we put the hill of Lech in Gniezno, the first capital of Poland. And we put the shipyards of Gdańsk. This is our choice, Polish choice, of objects, values and memories that might be represented not only as national heritage, but representing values and memories that allow to imagine that these places might be emblematic for Europe with all other 64 places that are shortlisted in Europe. Let's look at one of them, the shipyards of Gdańsk. The question of Polish national pride, Polish symbol of independence, fight, against communism, symbol of freedom, and then the question how it's used in the European perspective and what it means when it is on the list and what it means for Europe on this list. So if, you, if we look at the question of the shipyards of Gdańsk, if we look what it's put and what is labeled, we will find easily that in Gdańsk we've got a few objects that have, that bear this element. The first is the gate itself, the gate of the shipyards of Gdańsk, this famous place that you might remember when people gathered around, were waiting for Lech Wałęsa, just standing and waiting for the results of the talks between the workers 
and the government. This is the gate. So the gate itself, then the place when the agreement between the government and the workers was signed. This is the second place. And the third place is the monument of the fallen workers in 1970 in Gdańsk with a multifaceted, multi-layered and very complicated memory that is behind. What is represented, what kind of memory is represented there in this place of Polish national place becoming a European one? So we've got in this place a reference to the fallen ship workers of December 1970 bloodshed in December 1970. It's present there, of course, in this monument. We've got, we've got a reference to a national drama in Katyn. We've got citations from John Paul II, citations from, Bi from the Bible, and of course, a citation from a Polish Nobel, Pri Nobel Prize winner in literature, Czesław Miłosz. All this refers to Polish national drama, bloodshed, violence, dedication, victimhood, but glory, national glory, and fight for the independence as well. So all that creates the national understanding of what this place means for Poles, for us. When this place does not only represent Polish values, Polish memories, Polish histories, when they become an emblematic place for Europe, this place that might be called Lieu National de Drame, de Victoire et de Gloire, I would say that this place is reshaped in a certain way. And the meanings that are put behind this place are slightly different. And the question of Europeanization of memories, values, and histories that are behind this place are extremely interesting and important. As I would say, to go to the end, I would say that for the Polish, for the Poles, the shipyard of Gdańsk symbolizes, represents triumphs of freedom over the communist regime. But if we look how it's used at what it means and what meaning is given in the official discourse in the European context, as we know that there are no heritages, but there are discourses which create them. So in this perspective, I would say that the shipyard of Gdańsk symbolizes freedom and the struggle to attain it. Freedom, I mean. So symbolizes freedom and the struggle to attain freedom. Too cool, just it. But it's all, all the time a kind of reminder that the historic unification of the Western and Central parts of Europe was only possible thanks to the sacrifices which had been made in the struggle to overthrow the communist system. So, just to conclude, the idea of understanding the past in Europe through the concept of European heritage means looking at what we've got in common and how different meanings, memories, histories and values might be used to make us more aware of our common past. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames, Messieurs, grand merci pour votre attention. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope to see you soon in Krakow. Thank you very much.